Well, thanks a lot, Andrew. We're now very pleased to be joined by State Senator Tony Avella, Democrat from Queens, who's been very outspoken on the issue. Senator, thanks for a few minutes. I appreciate it. No, yeah, thanks for having me on your show. I guess I know your answer to my question. You're not shocked that things are this bad in Albany. No, Albany has had a terrible reputation for decades. In fact, before the governor took office uh, two years ago when I came into the state Senate, New the New York legislature was listed as one of the worst, if not the worst, in the country. Um, and I've also said that the, the corruption charges that have come forward, it's only the tip of the iceberg. You know, yes, it was dysfunctional, but this crooked, I mean, <laughs> What have you seen or what have you heard hints or rumors of? I mean, some of the stuff we heard, for example, that Samson said, it almost sounded like a mob shakedown. I mean, we're not talking on the fringes here. We're talking out now crooks, if it's true. Right. You know, um, I, I was shocked to see that comment, uh, allegedly, from uh, Senator Samson. Uh, he's a nice guy. And... While the corruption exists, to actually make that sort of comment, which sort of one leads one to believe that somebody is going to be, you know, taken out in terms of murder, um, I, I was shocked by that. I'm not shocked by the amount of corruption that has come forward because o in Albany, money moves the system. Um, unfortunately, you know, in terms of some of your questions, I'm the last person that a lot of my colleagues will talk to. Because going back to, to my days, even in New York City Council, um, my reputation is the, being the reformer. So I'm the last person some of my colleagues will talk to when it comes to talking about these issues. You, know, you talked about some practical concerns um, that you guys might not even have enough Democrats to have a quorum here. But at the same end, you saw the Times story where people making jokes about it. They're patting each other down here before they'll have conversations or asking who's wearing a wire. Do people get the scope of how serious not only the charges are, but also how fed up the public is with this? Or do some of them still think this is uh, just business as usual in Albany? Um, I, I think it's a combination of all those things. Um, there are some elected officials who believe they're insulated from whatever the public feels. Um, I've been saying for years, and I hope that this presents a real opportunity for some real change. And the governor has to take a lead in this. If we don't pass meaning reform in Albany now, if the all these charges have come forward and the likelihood of more elected officials being indicted, um, then shame on all of us. Uh, before we get to do what to do about it, I'm curious as to why I've heard all sorts of rationales for why we've had the problems. That, listen, Albany was never for the faint of heart here, but it's gotten filthier, if you want to use that expression, in recent years by some of the characters who've sought office. And because they want to use these campaign funds here with all the broad discretion that comes along with it. I've heard others say, hey, you know what? If you have a system based on people being able to have a day job and then another job on the side, it begs for conflicts of interest. Mm. And the third is there's so little oversight right now. Uh, where there used to be a room full of reporters, you got one or two that are left here that cover the Albany Beat. It's like the Wild West up here. What have you seen since so you've been up in Albany that's the root of so many of these problems? Well, there's no one thing. And as you mentioned, all the, uh, the issues and the situations that you described are part of the problem. I mean, we have to eliminate money from the system. That's why there has to be meaningful campaign finance reform. Um, right now, even as a state senator, somebody from New York could donate more money to me as a candidate for state senate if I want to do re-election than they could if I ran for mayor of New York City. There also needs to be term limits. When I uh, ran for office in the state senate in 2010 and took office in 2011, I beat a Republican incumbent who had been in Albany for 38 years. I mean, nobody should be in office for that long a period of time. Even the most well-intentioned person is going to get jaded um, and, and sort of go into that Albany philosophy. There also be, needs to be meaningful reform in the oversight agencies. Um, the governor and the legislature passed a reform measure, measure uh, a year ago, but obviously it's not enough. So there needs to be more in, that, in terms of that. We also need to make it full-time. Uh, because right now, as you said, there are too many people with outside incomes, which become a real conflict of interest when doing legislation. Let's say you're sitting on 
two, three million bucks in a campaign fund. And I saw this with Pedro Espada to agree, maybe not those numbers, but those clinics that he set up in his district. Do you almost have to be an idiot to get caught right now where you have to be over the top? Or can you set up these charities or these funds or these clinics or whatever and funnel money, hire family members, and the chances of getting caught, unless you're a real uh, overt numbskull here, you can probably get away with it. Is that part of the problem that it's so appealing, unless you're a moron, that you can get away with a lot of this graft? Well, I you know, you have to be a moron to think that you're not going to be caught eventually, especially when you start hiring relatives. Um, but the problem I see is the fact, if you look at who's doing the indictments and actually bringing charges, it's the feds. It's the U.S. Attorney's Office. It almost seems to me that the local investigative agencies are afraid, either, one, they don't have the powers, in my opinion, but two, are they, do they have the courage to take on sitting elected officials since some of them rely on their jobs from sitting elected officials? Um, I think the federal government needs to be more involved and we need to change the process by which the local uh, ethics commission and the local investigative agencies have more power. And that's actually legislation that I've introduced in Albany. Well, in terms of that last point, a lot of people said you got the U.S. attorney here who's the rock star, and the governor is now saying, well, he's going to take dramatic acts if you guys in Albany don't get around to it. I saw the Albany DEA say, oh, this is long overdue. we got to give more power to guys like me or even the state AG. Is the governor a little late to the party on this one? There's no question that the lead has to be taken by the governor. And he's talking the right talk, but we're waiting in the legislature for actually the governor's program bills. Um, we only have a couple more weeks, you know, maybe a month and a half of the, of the legislative session left. We end the week before the end of June. So here's an opportunity where we can do some meeting reform. But for it to get past the legislature, which has always been the problem, because the people who need to be reformed are the ones who are voting on the reform. So it has to be the governor. And many of us are anxiously waiting for his legislative package of reform. And I can tell you, once he does it, many of us are stepping up and co-signing the bills, and we're ready to vote for it. From when you went from the council in the city to Albany, what shocked you? Uh, and you're no neophyte here. You know how politics work. But when you got up there, what's one thing that would shock the public? Because it shocked you once you understood how business was done up in the Capital District. Well, I, I think in the, in the capital, there's more money that moves the system than in the city council. And the amount of money that people can donate to elected officials is huge. Um, and there's more lobbying done by lobbying firms. Uh, per capita, there's probably 10 times more lobbying firms up in Albany than in the city. Um, I, I think the fact that what has surprised me is how little we actually do in Albany. Um, for example, for the first couple of months of this legislative session, which began in January, all we're doing is passing bills that we passed in the last legislative session that didn't get enacted into law. We're, very, we're not doing a whole lot of new business. And when it comes to reform, we're doing virtually nothing. I mean, uh, you know, in addition to the reforming the Ethics uh, Commission and strengthening the enforcement powers, I'm the first person in the history of Albany to introduce term limits legislation, to make it 12 years and out. I can't get anybody to discuss that in Albany. Um, it really is amazing that we don't really do the, the nitty-gritty uh, legislation to do reform. And, and that's, a, that's a disgrace. Last thing before I let you go, Senator, I know you said you think we're only in the middle of this scandal. You think we're gonna, we're, there's going to be more names? Uh, absolutely. And I'm happy that this is happening. And let's root out all the corruption. Uh, I was actually quoted in the New York Times about, you know, when I was asked about people wearing wires, and I said, let everybody wear a wire. Let's root out every single iota of corruption. And then we could really start forward with a positive agenda. Good enough. State Senator Tony Avello, thank you very much for a few minutes. I appreciate it. No, thank you.